Just a few weeks ago, I published a little video introducing to this device the Kubuntu Focus NX. Now I want to do a more in-depth review of actually using this thing and giving you my thoughts on using it. So to do that, I wasn't too sure where to start because obviously the introduction to the device I had done in the previous video, which I suggest you that you check out if you're interested in it. Still, nonetheless, I will repeat some of the stuff that was in the other video, such as the specifications, obviously. But I still was slightly confused on where to start. So at the end, I decided to start from the actual workflows that the Kubuntu Focus team proposes to the users via guided solutions. So what are guided solutions? Very quickly, when you actually boot for the first time into the computer, you will see that there are some pre-installed applications, which I've talked about last time, but there are some workflows that they suggest. One workflow might be, as an example, changing your theme so that it adapts to your tests better. And they actually have this list of guides that go goes from that, like theming, to also using complex applications uh, such as blenders and they also uh, have like introductions to blender videos embedded into the guide of course taken from other people on youtube with credits and everything obviously the first one I tried out was actually syncing locally to my Google Drive folder, which is something that is also asked in the installation menu, in the installation process. The application for this is in sync. It comes out of, uh, out of the box if you want it, and you can just log in with your Google account or OneDrive, and then uh, select a folder and everything will be automatically uh, synced locally from your Google Drive folder. It worked very nicely and it was very nice to actually see it out of the box. If you know, if you don't know how to use the tool, then there's actually the whole paging, uh, page explaining how to go step through, through step, even though it's pretty intuitive. And if anything goes wrong, each one of these pages I'm going to talk about actually has a troubleshooting section at the end, which, was, which also was very nice to see. This was actually my very first time syncing my Google Drive locally because I never really thought about it. So the fact that it was in front of my face actually helped me get uh, out of my comfort zone and actually set up this thingy that was super easy to set up, but I never really took the time to do it. Now I do have, I do have it, I like it, it's nice to have. Something very similarly goes for uh, the backupping, backupping, doing backups. That is again enabled out of the box. And that is again something that I usually never deal with, even though I probably should. So it takes snapshots at the very regular times and then deletes the older ones to only keep some like one every day, as an example. You can see these are the backups that it has done of by computer automatically in the last few days. I can even manually uh, do some right now. You can see that I added some files through time, so it works nicely and I can restore previous snapshots. I can also, although I couldn't test it, couldn't test this because I don't have a large hard drive with me, take a snapshot to an external hard drive, which makes very much sense. It's something that I guess I should do. Now, how to do that is again, very nicely documented into the page, again, with troubleshooting steps if anything goes wrong. So a very nice experience from this workflow as well. There are also two guides on how to set up Windows 10 and Windows 11 emulation inside of Linux, because it might be if you're a professional that you do need some tools or to test some things in a Windows virtual machine. And then there's also a bunch of guides which I found particularly interesting on how to um, work with KD Plasma out of the box. As an example, it tells you how to change the theme, which is very nice. And it's something that we very much take for granted at KDE. So the fact that somebody uh, closer to the actual user um, takes time to make a nice guide with a troubleshooting steps if anything goes wrong for the user is something very much appreciated and probably something that KDE itself should do, but currently we don't. There's also, and this is, I always find this kind of funny, a guide on how to uh, set up your panel if you mess it up, because obviously KD Plasma is one of the few operating system des desktops that uh, allows you to customize your panel. And if you do a disaster, you can always right click, remove the panel, and then add a new one from stock. Again, this is 
from KD side of things not really documented anywhere. So the fact that Kubuntu Focus took time to do a um, page explaining how to do this was very nice to see. So what you should take out of this section is that when you're buying this hardware, you're also buying a series of workflows and guides and troubleshooting steps that comes just with it. Let me though do some lighter criticism just for funny, but I have to say I am, you know, a KDE contributor. I contribute to KDE. I've done some merge requests to KDE, many. And two of those which I'm particularly proud of are the fact that I made the default panel more transparent and blurry because it looks better, more modern, obviously. And I also made sure that the icons on the right horn of the panel are a bit smaller using margin separators so that the icon sizes are more consistent and look prettier. Now, as you also know, of course, distros can choose whatever defaults to ship with, and they don't necessarily have to follow what we set as a default from KDE. And both Kubuntu does this, it changes some of the defaults, and also the Kubuntu focus team, which done, uh, has done these devices, has changed a bit the image as an example, heading the widget on the desktop that I've talked about last time. Now, I'm not exactly sure if this is about the Kubuntu step or the Kubuntu focus step, but both of these very important for me patches has been <laughs> turned off by default. So you don't get any transparency and blurriness out of the box, and you do not get the nicely sized icons that I like on the right of the panel. Now, this, is, this really isn't an actual criticism because this is KD Plasma. It literally took three clicks to revert to blurriness and three other clicks to get the margin RS back. It's KD Plasma, it's meant to be customizable, but I, I just wanted to share this personal anecdote. <laughs> My poor merge requests. Okay, so what have I done with these devices in the last days? So firstly, I've actually registered my podcast in it. I have a podcast and in this case, it was very nice to see that a lot of applications in this regard come out of the box. As an example, registering podcast, I use Audacity. Obviously, Audacity comes out of the box. It is the latest stable version from Ubuntu stable, which means that it's not exactly the latest Audacity version. I actually decided to install the very latest from the Flatpak, but still the fact that I could just boot the device and be productive just like that without, without having to install usually like five or six application was very nice. Another example, OBS was out of the box and I did some recording on this device, even the one that you're seeing right now. And the fact that it was out of the box was very much appreciated. If I have to find a nitpick, but it really has to like searching for me, uh, OBS, I think out of the box, did not have any type of uh, GPU acceleration enabled, even if uh, in, this th in this case you don't have like, a, you just have an integrated uh, GPU as we'll see later on, but uh, still it does provide some it takes some weight off from the CPU, makes things a little bit easier. But to be fully honest, uh, there's I haven't ever met a single device that came with OBS with GPU support out of the box that actually worked. <laughs> so I, I I can understand that. I've also done 4K video editing with this thing. And in fact, this is a 4K video that I'm currently editing on this machine. So right now I will insert a screen cap showing you how it actually performs. And then allow me to do to get into another more personal anecdote, which is I tried, of course, to do KD development on this thing. This is my usual workload. And this is sadly where I had the most issues and not because Kubuntu Focus, somehow because of KDE. So I've actually contributed for KDE for two, three years, more than that. And I've built KDE Plasma forms from source since the very beginning. I never had like big issues, but somehow in these very last weeks, KDE building uh, <laughs> difficulty has gone crazy up. I, I don't know what has happened, but Usually you do have some packages that Ubuntu, because this is based on Ubuntu, obviously doesn't have in its stable version. Usually you just have to like add the more, uh, the development version of Ubuntu and then get the, just those packages from there and it works. 
This time I also had to manually build some of those packages myself because they were required to be newer than even the development version of Ubuntu, which seems like a lot. And even after doing that, still <laughs> things still didn't work for some reason. As an example, I don't know why, but I still was on KD Frameworks 5.28, which in theory should have been handled by KD source build. I'm very confused about this. So I, I wasn't actually able to build KD Plasma desktop, not because of this device, this device, but because of KDE in the last week. I don't know what has happened, honestly. However, in this, my uh, attempt to build Plasma Desktop, I have built around 70 packages from source from the various KDE projects. And we'll see later the more uh, performance, more in-depth performance of this thingy. But as a user, user experience, this was absolutely on par with my other devices, such as the Dell XPS, which has a i7 core, whereas this is an i5. Okay, now let's quickly go through the actual specs to see how good the device is. Now, this machine in particular comes with a Core i5 1135G7 with an Iris XE 80EU, which is the base model. You can also buy a Core i7 11th generation 65G7 with an Iris XE 96EU. The base model has a 8 GB 3200 MHz monochannel RAM, but you can upgrade it to up to 64 GB and anything from 16 GB is dual channel. The base model just has a 250 GB Samsung NVMe, which can go up to 2 TB. You can also get a secondary SS disk from 500 GB to 4 terabytes. When you buy this, you can choose whether you want no encryption or full, in, full encryption for the disk. And you can also, for $120, get a YubiKey 5 NFC. You also do get Bluetooth version 5.2 integrated, so out of the box and both Wi-Fi 6 up to 2.4 gigabytes per second and Ethernet. You have ports both on the back and on the front for easier cable management. On the front, you do have a Thunderbolt 3 USB-C, a USB-A 3.2 Gen 2, a 2-in-1 audio, and on the side, SD memory card reader. On the back instead, we see power input, obviously, then a mini display port 14, the Ethernet port, two USB-A 3.2 Gen 2, another USB Thunderbolt 3, and HDMI 2.0B. The chassis is a Intel Nook Phantom Canyon, it has like metal and plastic surfaces. You've seen the pictures. It's, it has an integrated head sink, a BIOS controlled fans. We'll get to that. And the main components, so storage and memory are accessible just via unscrewing four Phillips screws. So how is actual performance? So I've run a Geekbank and these are the results. And they're actually pretty much uh, competing with my other devices. So currently uh, for now, the KDE Slimbook, which has a Ryzen 7 and the Dell XPS with its i7. I've also done this other test, which is compiling the Linux kernel. I found that funny and you can see that this is how this computer performed, and this is how it stacks against other um, CPUs for reference. Now, funnily enough, Open Benchmark, Open Benchmark calls this under average, but <laughs> low tire. But um, yeah, this isn't really representative of all the CPUs. It's more like all the high-end CPUs. So this was the PIS model. This is not going to be a, like a server machine, but you know, it is rather high-end for most tasks for most people. You know what you need. Regarding the fun, I actually put it to like the maximum as a test. And I also put to maximum performance, obviously, during this test. And this is the sound that uh, my phone actually registered in um, from the distance that I usually sit from this computer. So it should kind of be representative. As soon as I started compiling, obviously the fan started firing, but that's pretty normal. And honestly, it wasn't that big of an issue. You do hear the fans, but you know, that that's the whole point. <laughs> 
you can customize the fan behavior from uh, the BIOS. You can see here the settings. I've also measured temperature after like hours of compiling as a test. I run like, <laughs> I started building and compiling KD projects any KDE project that were actually, that was compiling just as a test and after some hours the temperature were in between around 80 sometimes reaching 90 as a maximum and finally another very good thing about this device is that it supports the intel p state which means that if you open up the brightness battery and brightness applet you do see the option to switch between performance or balanced or battery life which in this case it is not battery life, obviously, but it was nice to see, see this out of the box because the other machines that don't support this have to implement their own settings, their own applet. In this case, it just supports Intel P-State out of the box, which is extra nice. Some final words regarding the support, which was very good throughout this video. As an example, in the last video, I raised some criticism towards the installer regarding some steps that were not very intuitive. As an example, you like uh, asked the computer to do something and it, it did seem like it ignored you, but that was only for 30 seconds whilst it was doing some work in the background. And just after a few days of that, they fixed the bug immediately and they pushed out an update to avoid that. So that bug that I talked about in the last video is not there anymore. Now it actually waits for the previous step to end before going into the next step. And it actually shows a pop-up before, like whilst you're waiting for um, the background jobs to finish, which is very nice. I can also confirm that I've kept seeing like work regarding the bugs that affect this device that are related to KDE and so not due to the um, Kubuntu Focus uh, themselves. Uh, of course, they raised the bug and they're still doing like bounties for KD developers that are working on this kind of bugs. So they are very active in actually contributing to the whole environment. And this is a really important point that I made in the last video. I just want to reiterate, here, reiter, reiterate it here. With this device, you're not just buying the device. This is something that actually helps the whole community to grow around it, which is particularly nice. The next things that I'm going to do with this device is trying to build KD Plasma on it. I still don't know what's up with that. As soon as I do that, I can actually, you know, see how KD Plasma Master works on the device, but of course, when you do that, you go into untested and unstable territory. What this came out of the box with, I found no issue with. I mean, they removed my merge requests, which was, <laughs> I'm just kidding, it was nice. So as always, the point really of these devices is not just to work out of the box, but also they have good support, very good support. They also have like all the guides around it that help you. They have pre-installed apps and they have actually tested this application to work with this specific configuration. Their whole idea is to make sure that they have one image for the device, but that one image works nicely and without bugs. And I have met, I haven't met any, so, yeah, it works. And not only that, but not just the experience you have, they also are able, thanks to all of this, to give back to the KD community. So the more I discovered about the Kubuntu Focus initiative, the more honestly things like, a, it seems like a genuinely good initiative that is working. I don't know what else to say. It just works.